Well, hello again, guys. This is Christian Massar speaking again with another installment of History Vice. So, today is a little different. This is more of a news update. No, here, let me take my glasses off here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it's a little bit of a news update. Uh, General Norman Schwarzkopf died today at the age of 78. Uh, just read it on BBC News as I was, um, as I, after I logged on to my computer today. So, yeah, so General Norman Schwarzkopf was, of course, a U.S. general that led the coalition forces in the first Gulf War of 1991. And uh, that war, of course, started when Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. And, <clears throat> and the world, responding to this hostile takeover, but also largely uh, in, to protect the world's supply of oil. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm, a bit of a froggy throat this morning. So, it's, uh, so anyway, so he died today, and, uh, he, during the first Gulf War, he served with distinction. Uh, a lot of people have good things to say about him. I mean, Queen Elizabeth II even, uh, even, uh, crowned him, uh, or, or knighted him honorably, and, um, or gave him an honorary knighthood. And Schwarzkopf commanded a six-week, uh, campaign. Uh, against the Iraqi forces and absolutely decimated them, mostly, <coughs> mostly through the use of airstrikes and uh, and of course uh, the Iraqi army was actually a fairly sizable army before the war started, uh, before they invaded Kuwait. Uh, but even though the airstrikes, you know, when you have air superiority and everything like that, stuff on the ground, you know, it's not, it's, it definitely won't bode well for the guys on the ground. Let's say that. Uh, Bill Fawcett said that if, no matter how good your army is, no matter how high the morale, it will be crushed by good air superiority when there's nothing to combat it. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. So anyway, uh, he, Schwarzkopf also served in Vietnam and, uh, and led the forces in uh, invading Grenada. And also... The uh, interesting thing about Schwarzkopf, which really struck me, is um, you can you can read it on BBC or any other news site, I'm sure. But uh, but what Schwarzkopf said, he said that you know they didn't he didn't really want to invade Iraq in '91, which is interesting. You know, him being a general, this is his job. But you know, like many aspects of our jobs, we don't like that, and we don't like many aspects of our job, right? And then, and Schwarzkopf, he even said, "I hate war." And the thing is, though, that as a general, you need to be careful to do your job, but have as many few human casualties as possible. And that's different, definitely different from many generals that have been uh, been out throughout history or serving throughout history. And that kind of reminds me of the quote that no nobody prays for peace more than a soldier. And what's kind of interesting, you know, when you really think about it, that makes sense because. You know, we as, you know, military students or it, military aficionados or people interested in it or people just even just watching the news, we may, you know, pray for peace if you're religious or, you know, you write letters, you you write things, you give money to aid agencies, you do, you do whatever, you know. But in the end, a lot of it, like for military students uh, like myself, you know, uh, in some ways, it becomes. <clears throat> excuse me. In some ways, looking at a war on television or listening to somebody like Rex Murphy or or uh, somebody like that talk about it or Wolf Blitzer, you know, we're we're watching this, and then it it almost becomes an exercise. Like we can look at the wars in the past, and then we can apply those lessons to the wars that are going on now. And then it becomes kind of an exercise. It's almost like an experiment. It's like, oh, what's going to happen next? You know, not not that we have a callous kind of a sick view of war like that, but in a way, you know, we, you know, and we certainly don't forget the the people that are suffering in it. But in a way, that's kind of, you know, we we can look at it as an exercise. But for someone who's on the ground, like a, a soldier in Vietnam, or you know, a rebel in Syria, or or a a soldier in the in the Syria in Assad's army, you know they're on the ground and it's not an exercise to them. This is not a drill, people. And you know, so it's very interesting. You know, unless you know, there are many warlike soldiers out there. Many warlike generals have, as I said in the past, have 
have been there and they they relish war like napoleon was said that it, he loved it and you know there's certainly that there's certainly that part of human nature that many people fall to and and it's um but for the common soldier i would say most of them they would if anybody wants peace it would be them because they're right in the middle of it they're losing their friends they're losing they miss their family they're away they're on the front they're on away from their family or <clears throat> maybe their family is a casualty you know or they could be so <clears throat> especially in civil wars so that's very interesting what Schwarzkopf was saying there so uh, and of course uh, so anyway to continue on with Schwarzkopf's life he retired of course and then he became a military advisor for or military <clears throat> consultant for a ABC I believe it said here uh, so yeah now he's and uh, what's very interesting is that he he supported the second war in Iraq in 2003 but uh, he's criticized it for the mistakes that have been made uh, including using the poorly trained uh, Iraqi forces after Saddam's fall so or and so that's kind of interesting because we kind of see that same situation in Afghanistan we've heard about I've heard about the same thing where a lot of uh, you know the Afghan soldiers, unfortunately, are untrained, and so it's, there's almost kind of a question about, you know, how is Afghanistan going to be on its feet militarily after the coalition forces leave? Whenever that will be, uh, our Canadian forces pulled out uh, last year, but well, we have advisors there now. It's kind of a similar situation to um, uh, to U.S. Uh, involvement in bef uh, in Vietnam before they got in fully involved in the war, and uh, so. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, and uh, another interesting thing about Schwarzkopf is that a lot of people criticized him and, well, I guess the coalition forces in general, about, you know, why didn't you go to Baghdad and take down Saddam then, back in 91? And Schwarzkopf said that, you know, the thing is that when you, it's one thing to change a regime, you also have to take care of it. And, you know, regime change, okay, that's fine, but if if you're doing it, you better be prepared to pay for government services, pay for re restarting the military, pay to train it, take the time. You know, there's going to be a lot of money, a lot of strain on your system, on your economy, and and the people at home, they might not agree with that. They might be more concerned about jobs. They might be more concerned about getting a job at McDonald's, which they can't get, or rather than the training the military in faraway Iraq or Afghanistan or wherever. So, in you know, hypothetical situation. So it's uh, so it's one of those things. It's uh, so Schwarzkopf was right on right on the button as far as you know. He's certainly right. Whether that was whether pulling back was the right option, right action to take. You know, that's that may be debatable to some, but. Um, but well, certainly he's right, you know, when you invade and take over a country, you know, there's a lot of things you have to worry about. So, and uh, there may be loyalists to the old regime, so you never know, right? So, uh, and you better make sure that the new government is not just as corrupt or bad as the old one. Remember what I was saying about revolutionaries before. So, anyway, so, uh, condolences to the Schwarzkopf family and to Schwarzkopf's friends and uh, Stormin Norman, uh, Stormin because he's... Uh, it was a nickname because he was known for having a temper, much like uh, uh, Howling Mad Smith, uh, the one in charge of invading Iwo Jima in back in '45. But uh, anyway, so rest in peace, General Schwarzkopf, and uh, condolences to his family again and to viewers. Hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, have a good time, and we'll see you later.